ourselves in the mighty hand of God. And uh, let's believe that God is going to speak to us. Amen. So this morning, uh, the, the topic that uh, which I have selected uh, for the message of today is David, the lonely and restless bird. David, the lonely and restless bird. Amen. So I would request uh, uh, the Jason brother to uh, read the Bible verses now. And uh, we will uh, think about, I mean, uh, what is the experiences that David was going through in his life and the other people, those who were going through the difficult situations in their life. So uh, this, I, I, I believe that uh, this message will encourage every one of us this morning as we are uh, going on to that message, you know, uh, God can speak to every person. Amen. So I request uh, uh, Jason Miller to read uh, Psalm number 102. Verses uh, six and seven. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie, I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. Okay. So the topic for this message is David and David, the lonely and restless bird. David, the lonely and restless bird. So in these verses. David is comparing himself with mainly three birds. Mainly three birds. I mean, the first one is the pelican of the wilderness. And the second one is the owl of the empty place. And the third bird is the sparrow on the housetop. The first one is the pelican of the wilderness. And the second one is the owl of the empty place. And the third one is the sparrow on the house talk. I mean, so now let us think about those three birds and how those birds are symbolized with the specific situations of David the king or David the psalmist. You know, here what is happening? So here David is comparing himself. David is comparing himself with three kinds of birds of the Bible. Okay, so he's just picking some of the birds from the Bible and saying that, okay, in my I mean, surrounding places, I can see many birds and I'm going through the situation. What is the peculiarity of these words? Okay, the pelican and owl and the sparrow. Okay, so, so he was saying that, okay, I'm trying to compare myself with the pelican of the wilderness and the owl of the empty place and the sparrow on the housetop. Hallelujah. So here we can understand that David was, was is the psalmist and he is the, he is the, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, he is the king. But at the same time, many a times David was going through the difficult situations. David was going through the, I mean, tough situations in his life. And David was going through the, I mean, isolation. And uh, many times he was in the he was in the situation of loneliness. So now we will go to the first I mean bird which I mean he is trying to come bird with I mean that is the pelican of the wilderness pelican of the wilderness. I mean so that indicates the depressed situation and reproached situation and the loneliness of David. You know the pelican of the wilderness indicates. I mean, the depressed situation, the reproach, reproach situation, and the loneliness of David. I mean, you know, according to, when you think about uh, uh, the pelican, the bird pelican of the wilderness, you know, according to uh, Leviticus chapter I mean, um, 11, verse 18, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 18, we read that uh, the, 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 pelican, the, the pelican is the is the, is the bird which is unclean. Okay, we read that verse. Yeah. Leviticus eleven eighteen. The white owl, the desert owl, the osprey. Yes. So the pelican also is written there. You know that pelican is classed as an unclean creature and not to be eaten by the people. It's an unclean bird. Amen? So the, the comparison uh, of the Spanish of himself to the uh, pelican in the wilderness is suggested probably to reveal the attitude of the bird that it sits for hours or even days with its bills resting on its breast. Amen? So this is the speciality of this bird pelican. Amen? So most of the time, 
we can co compare uh, the situations of the day that uh, which he was going through with the pelican because you know there's a, there's a special attitude of this bird it is suggested that it sits for hours or even days and days with it it's well i mean it's well resting on its breast so that is a situation and that is the characteristics of uh, the, the the bird i mean pelican so the wilderness here is probably an inhabited land you know it is it is quoted there the pelican of the wilderness you have to think about what is the wilderness here it is it is probably the uninhabited land the land is good for nothing poor grazing and useless for growing crops i mean and the bird pelican indicates both depressed and miserable situation of david i mean so there was a time that uh, i mean david was going through a depressed situation so that is the reason that he is saying that i mean i am i mean i mean comparing myself to the i mean pelican which was in the wilderness okay why that indicates the depressed and miserable situation of david you know sometimes uh, some people used to say that i am feeling uh, empty you know some people used to say i am helpless i'm isolated i'm excluded i mean or i'm left out you know actually their feeling is true in their concept and in their thought their feeling is true at the same time they they, they are not able to realize the help and support of the church members and the presence of jesus during the time of loneliness hallelujah you know many a times most of the people are going through the loneliness and the isolated situation but the people many of the time you know because of the i mean uh, abundance of the feeling they are not uh, they are not able to realize i mean what is the support of the church members and they are not able to understand what is the presence of jesus during the time of i mean isolation during the time of loneliness hallelujah you know loneliness is one of the most tragic situations in our life loneliness is one of the most tragic situations in our life you know that is the extreme loneliness is experienced by i mean uh, uh, david the psalmist or the king david i mean so the, this is the feeling of isolation and the loneliness this is the feeling of isolation and the loneliness but remember one thing that god will never leave us or forsake us when we go through the situations of the isolation or the loneliness hallelujah you know the word isolation is well familiar for every one of us these days you know every one of us are i mean talking about uh, when quarantine or uh, isolation all those words i mean this the word isolation is well familiar uh, for every one of us i know that i mean so because of the season that uh, the pandemic situation of corona i mean so we used to use that word isolation 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 every time every time everywhere i mean so we had i know i heard any experiences uh, uh, these days from uh, our friends and uh, uh, my friends and my relatives and uh, i mean how they were uh, surviving the isolation period because of the corona and there are many friends i mean there are many pastors and there are many uh, people undergone for um, and by the i mean uh, corona issues and all so you know i heard many experience from them you know what is that you know they are saying oh we were sitting alone in a room we were sitting alone in a room and uh, maybe maybe 14 days or 21 days okay maybe 15 days no contact with any of the family members or no contact with the friends there is no contact with any church members I mean, nobody is there with the, the in, in that uh, with that person in that uh, situation this is called the situation of isolation you know they are sitting alone there is nobody to support them i mean maybe 14 days or 21 days or something i mean they are sitting there in a room and uh, there is nobody no family members no church members no i mean friends i mean nobody is there sitting alone sitting alone spending time in a room i mean sitting alone isolation you know even last month uh, my brother in law uh, he resigned his job from kuwait and came back to kerala from kuwait you know as as he reached to the uh, airport the health department uh, uh, workers uh, came to his house to make sure that whether everything is arranged for him on the upstairs i mean in, in a separate room his his name is monsi my brother in law from kuwait you know as as he reached there reached to the airport The, the 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 health workers they came to the house and they were just i mean make, making sure that okay oh everything is arranged for uh, this this person in the upstairs 
in, in, in a separated room. Okay, then what happened? From airport, he raced to his house, but his family, I mean, members, his wife and his children could not meet him or could not speak to him. He came to home, he came to home, but they could not, the family members, his wife, my sister, and their children, they could not speak to him. Directly, he went to the upstairs and he was staying there. His wife used to, I mean, keep the food on on the on the uh, staircase, eh? and will uh, ring a bell or something. Okay, ring a bell, make a sound. Then he will come out of the, I mean, room, and he will take the food and he will eat sitting in the room itself. You know uh, what happened? You know, last week uh, when we were calling uh, my parents, my parents, my uh, 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 father. You know, I was seeing that a video call that, uh, you know, uh, my father was just there, I mean, uh, uh, coming to till the gate, till the gate of that house, uh, from there looking up and speaking to uh, my brother-in-law. You know, this is a situation, you know, nobody can come to that place where we are. That is the isolation. Hallelujah. So he was, he was saying that, that the experience of 40 days isolation has been really horrible. The experience of 14 days isolation has been very, really horrible. I mean, you know, one pastor, I heard about uh, one pastor, he's my friend also, when uh, you might have heard about uh, his, I mean, uh, uh, experience also. You know, one pastor, I mean, uh, he went to, uh, went for the visiting in UK. And in that, I mean, in, in this corona season, uh, somehow he returned back to Kerala also. And as soon as he landed in the Cochin airport, he was diagnosed with corona positive. Then directly from airport, he was shifted to an isolation ward. I mean, after getting out of the isolation ward, he was explaining the experiences that he had, I mean, he had inside the isolation ward. He said he was, uh, I mean, sitting alone in that room, no contact with anybody. I mean, I mean uh, he was sitting alone. There is nobody to help him. But one thing that he said was really amazing in my life. He said, I was not simply sitting there, but reading Bible, praying, worshiping, and attending the Zoom meeting. Hallelujah. You know, you have to think about one thing. You know, sometimes the, 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 the experience of the isolation, the experience of isolation, the experience of loneliness, I mean, will, will make many changes in our life. I mean, he was, you know, he was sharing, the pastor was sharing like, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I could experience the presence of God inside the isolation room. Hallelujah. More than while he was with his family and in the church meeting and even while he was doing ministry in UK. This is a great experience that he had. You know, he was sharing, okay, I was experiencing the presence of God mightily in my body, in my, in my, in my heart, in my spirit. Inside the isolation room, more than while I was with my family, more than I was in the church meeting, more than even I was doing the ministry in UK. So this is what we have to experience in our life also. Whenever we go through the isolation, whenever we go through the, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, I mean, a uh, long, lonely experience. Hallelujah. So I really understand one thing that the experience of isolation or loneliness is blessing for the people of God who serve God with a pure heart. Hallelujah. And then let me, let me remind you one thing that, you know, the experience of isolation, the experience of loneliness, the, the, the situation where, I mean, nobody can help us. The situation where, I mean, nobody is with us. The situation where, I mean, nobody is helping us. Nobody is supporting us. Hallelujah. And that situation, we have to understand one thing that, I mean, God's presence is, I mean, with all the people of God, those who are going through the isolation time, and those who are going through the loneliness. Hallelujah. So let me remind you one thing that the experience of isolation or loneliness is not at all a curse for the children of God. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? The experience of the isolation or loneliness is not at all the curse for the children of God, but it is a blessing for them because Almighty God will enable us and strengthen us to transform the bitter experiences into the blessing. Hallelujah. This is the message that I would like to I mean, share with you this morning that God's presence is with you. Hallelujah. God's presence is with you. The, 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 the 
presence of the Almighty God is with you. I mean, even though you're going through the isolation time, even though you're going through the, I mean, lonely experience, hallelujah. Even though you are alone in a room, I mean, God's presence is there, hallelujah. Never the, the, the isolation period or the isolation or the loneliness is not at all a curse for the people of God. Hallelujah. I mean, we will be encouraged by the word of God. I mean, to change the curse to the blessing. Hallelujah. We will be able to, I mean, I mean, transform the curse of the, I mean, I mean, things of this world into the blessing. Hallelujah. So everything, every bitter experience will teach you the lesson that you can win the role and you can, you can get the victory over everything. Hallelujah. Because of the presence of God that you are experiencing experiencing in your personal life. Hallelujah. So remember one thing, that the days of loneliness is for a short period. I mean, the days of loneliness is for a short period. It's not for a long term. I mean, isolation is only for the short time, short period. I mean, it is not for every time. It is not, a, not at all a long term. But the days of blessing is not for a shorter period, Rather, this is going to be forever and ever with the Lord. How many of you understand that point? I mean, the, the days or the period of the loneliness and isolation is only for a short period. It is very short. But the days of blessing is not for a shorter period. Rather, that is going to be forever and ever with the Lord. And that is the foundation of our Christian home. We have a Christian hope. Hallelujah. So what is the foundation of a Christian hope? I mean, we will be with the Lord. I mean, we will be experiencing all the blessing, blessings and blessings from the Lord in heaven. I mean, we will be always with the Lord. I mean, forever and ever. Hallelujah. I mean, there are many, I mean, I mean, troubles in this world. There are many problems in this world. Hallelujah. There are many difficult situations in this world. Hallelujah. And there are, I mean, some kind of the experience of the isolation in our life. There are, I mean, some kind of, I mean, difficult situation and loneliness in our life in this world. Hallelujah. But there will be nobody with you. Hallelujah. But I mean, remember that we have a hope. Hallelujah. Our Christian hope is founded in, in something that we will be with Jesus Christ forever and ever. Hallelujah. Now we will go to the Amen Sodram. Hallelujah. I mean, God's concern towards the isolated people. Praise God. Hallelujah. What is the God's concern towards the isolated people? And how God is dealing with the people of God when they are going through the isolation. Okay, so I was, I mean, thinking about and I was preaching about, I mean, the pelican, the bird of pelican. You know, David is comparing himself with the pelican bird. Why? Hallelujah. So then, then, the then, first one is the pelican of the wilderness. So let us see what is the speciality of this bird and how God is concerned towards the isolated people. Many, there are many people going through the isolation. There are many people, I mean, going through the difficult situation and what God is concerning for them and what God is providing for them. Hallelujah. Now, we see in Bible, there are lots of incidents recorded about how the Lord strengthened his people while they were going through the isolation. I mean, there are many incidents. There are many incidents. I mean, we can, we can take many people and we can, I mean, think about many people, but I'm go not going to, I mean, speak about all the people, those who were going through the isolation isolation and the loneliness. But uh, I mean, I'll be just uh, bringing a few of the people I mean, in front of you and uh, I'll close my message. Hallelujah. So that's why, you know, when you read Bible, I mean, I mean God himself was coming down from heavenly places to visit and to walk with and have fellowship with man in the Garden of Eden. You understand that? Amen? So we have a God's concern. God has a concern about the isolated people, about the people, those who are going through the situation of loneliness. Amen? So the first thing that we understand, I mean, I mean, in the Garden of Eden, I mean, God himself was coming down from heavenly places to visit and to talk with them and to walk with them, I mean, and to have fellowship with the man in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. And again, Adam was alone in the garden. 
we know that Adam was alone in the garden of Eden. And God found that his company is not enough for Adam. This is the concern of God for the human being. Amen. Adam was alone in the garden. And God found that his company is not enough for the Adam. So, when we read Genesis chapter 2, 2, chapter 2, verse 18, we read that verse. Yeah, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper for him. Amen. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. It is not for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. I will make a helper suitable for him. Hallelujah. So, and to, uh, this, is the, this, uh, this is the first uh, I mean, I mean, concern of God towards Adam. You know, he found that his I mean, a company is not at all enough for them, for, for Adam, and I will make a helper suitable for him. And without that favor of, I mean, uh, to, 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 do, to do that favor for Adam, God did something that we read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 also. We read that also, 19 and 20. What is God's provision? Yeah. Chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. And out of the ground of the ground, the Lord formed every beast and living creatures of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. And Adam gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper meet for him. Yes, okay. So what is that? You know, this is the God's provision for Adam. This is the God's provision for Adam because God found that it is not, I mean, good for the man to be alone, to be alone. So I will do something. I will do a favor for Adam. And God did something that we read in these verses. What is that? Now out of the ground of the uh, ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them into the man to see what he could call them. I mean, to name the animals. Okay, then, I mean, what happened? And, and whatever the man called every living creatures, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and, and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper for, for him. Amen? So that is, the, that is the words. So remember one thing. You know, whatever God created, I mean, whatever God created, nothing is suitable for Adam. But now what happens? That God made Eve out of the rib of Adam and gave him as his wife. You know, Adam probably, I mean, uh, Adam probably only spent a day or two, I mean, days alone. That was a short time that, that then he got his companion. You know, we know that, you know, might have spent Adam in probably, I mean, uh, uh, one day or two days in, in garden, I mean, uh, alone. But after that, God provided a best half. And God provided a, a, a better half, I mean, for Adam. Hallelujah. And that is the provision of God for the people of God. That is the provision of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. And his loneliness and his isolation was only for, for short time. Maybe one day or two days. After that, I mean, God is providing one wife for Adam. And that is the provision of God. Hallelujah. And so God is the one who established the marriage in this earth. You know, this is the first marriage that we see in the Bible. In the Bible. In the, in, in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Making a companion for Adam. Eve. Amen. So that, that's, that's what we understand. God, Almighty God himself is the establisher. And he is the person who established the marriage on this earth. And the, the, the purpose of establishing the marriage was to take away the loneliness from the life of man. Amen. So establishing marriage and the purpose of the establishment of the marriage was to take away the loneliness from the life of man. And again, we see God blessed the families, the children, or generations to keep the harmony of the family. Amen. That's a blessing. You know, again, God blessed the families, the children, 
or generation to keep the harmony of the family. So now wherever, I mean, there are children in the family, there is a harmony, there is a happiness, there is a joy, right? I mean, so this is the blessing of God. I mean, hallelujah. And now I pray for all our families to be blessed by children. And I pray that the people, those who are praying for the children, I mean, this morning, I would, I would request to, I mean, everyone to pray for them also that God may bless them with children. Hallelujah. So this is a blessing. Hallelujah. I mean, children are the blessing that is the word of God. Hallelujah. So that is going to be fulfilled in our church also. I mean, in some of the families, I mean, in the coming days. Hallelujah. And I believe that, and we will all pray for that. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the blessing. You know, most of the time, the, the, the families, those who are not having a children, they feel, oh, we are alone. We are lonely. And we are an isolation, isolated place. We have nobody to support us. We have nobody to, I mean, encourage us. I mean, there is nobody to help us. There is nobody to support us. Hallelujah. And remember that, I mean, God is going to, I mean, change that the days of isolation into the blessing. Hallelujah. God is going to, I mean, change and transform the, the, the situation of the loneliness, I mean, into the, into the great blessing in the coming days. Hallelujah. Again, when we study about Joseph, when we study about uh, when Joseph, I mean, he was one of the person who went through the isolated situation. We know the, the, the full history of Joseph. I mean, he went through many, 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 I mean, difficult situations in his life. I mean, he, he received a dream from the Lord and for the fulfillment of the dream, I mean, he had to go through many difficult situations. I don't want to explain all those things. We all know that. I mean, we already, I mean, read all the portions, I mean, early, but we know that, I mean, Joseph was the one of the person who went through the isolated situation in many places. Hallelujah. And again, about I mean, Moses, when you study about Moses, I mean, Moses, I mean, throughout his life, Throughout his life, Moses spent a lot of time in social isolation. I mean, what is that? After the birth, he had uh, he had to spend three months in a reed basket on the Nile. That is the first isolation in his life. I mean, after the birth, he was not. Uh, I mean, uh, he was not able to. I mean, grow in the family, but he was. Uh, I mean, spending three months in a reed basket on the Nile. I mean, a river. I mean, and basically, Moses spent forty days on the mountain with God. Moses spending 40 days on the mountain with God. Hallelujah. And this isolation experiences gave Moses time to write the Torah and the opportunity to see God's backside. Hallelujah. This is I mean, amazing to understand that when I mean, Moses was going through the isolation situation. Hallelujah. That means, you know, when he was on the mountain, I mean, he was receiving the word of God. He was receiving the laws from the Lord, hallelujah, for the people of Israel, hallelujah. This is a great encouragement for every one of us, hallelujah. And, you know, you know, we have to understand one thing. Whenever we go through the isolated situation, whenever we go through the loneliness, hallelujah, I mean, God will give you more power. God will give you more presence of God with you, hallelujah. And you will see the face of God and you will be radiant, hallelujah. And because, I mean, uh, I mean, Psalm number 34, it says that, I mean, I mean, those who are looking into the Lord, their faces will be radiant, hallelujah. They will not get shaved, but they will be radiant, hallelujah. So that is the reason that Moses was getting, I mean, his face was radiant while he was coming, I mean, from the mountain. I mean, because he was isolated there. There was nobody with him. There was nobody with him. There was nobody to support him. There was nobody to speak with him. Hallelujah. But we understand that God's presence was there on the mountain and he was experiencing the presence of God on that mountain. Hallelujah. So this is this morning that we encourage every one of you. Hallelujah. According to the experience of Moses, according to the experience of David, according to the experience of Joseph. Hallelujah. And whenever they were going through the typical situation. Whenever they were going through the isolated situation, whenever they were going through the, I mean, I mean, hallelujah, I mean, loneliness, hallelujah, God's presence was with them and he encouraged them and strengthened them and anointed them for a wonderful ministry, I mean, I mean, in, 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 the, in the upcoming days, hallelujah. So that's what we understand from the I mean, life of Joseph and Moses. But now, when we go to New Testament, when we go to New Testament, we understand, I mean, there is a, there is a Paul, Apostle Paul. I mean, you know, Apostle Paul, the greatest evangelist, greatest evangelist, probably spent more time in prison than any other Bible character. There are many, 
other Bible characters. Okay, there are many Bible characters. You know, they, they were they were also having many 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 kinds of uh, I mean uh, imprisonment, and uh, they were I mean going through the difficult situation. And, but when we study about uh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, he was an evangelist. He was an apostle. He was spreading the gospel to I mean every places. I mean, he, he was, I mean, traveling from one place to another place and I mean, he was sharing the gospel and, I mean, uh, uh, establishing the churches. I mean, you know, he is the person probably spent more time in prison than any other Bible character. Although we don't know how many times or years he spent in prison. In, 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 in just one instance, he spent two years under house arrest by Rome. I mean, that's what we read. I mean, but many times, many times he was spending his time, years and years, he was spending time in prison. Hallelujah. But everything that happened in the life of Apostle Paul, I mean, was a blessing for him. Was a blessing for him. Hallelujah. The isolation period in the in the prison. Hallelujah. The loneliness in the prison. I mean, the, 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 the situation, I mean, where there is nobody to help him, where there is nobody to support him. I mean, that situation became the blessing for for Apostle Paul to spread the gospel in different places. Hallelujah. So that's the reason I can tell you that. Hallelujah. Whenever we go through the difficult situations. Hallelujah. When we go through the struggles in our life. Hallelujah. Whenever we go through the loneliness. Hallelujah. Isolation. I mean, I mean situation. I mean, remember that. Hallelujah. I mean, God will use you more and more mightily in the coming days. Hallelujah. When you go through that. I mean, situation. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. And he is able to, I mean, encourage you. Hallelujah. And again, the another person that we read from uh, the, the New Testament, that is, I mean, Apostle, Apostle John. Yes, Apostle John. You know, who is who was Apostle John? He was, you know, when you when we, when we study about uh, Apostle John, you know, when we were, I mean, uh, uh, studying the book of Revelation, we already uh, know many things about Apostle John, how John was banished to, I mean, island of Patmos. I mean, he was the person who was banished by Roman Empire. To the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. You know, he was alone there in the in the island of Patmos. John was alone in the island of Patmos. Patmos. There was nobody to help him. There was nobody to, I mean, I mean, embrace with the word of God. No believers, hallelujah. No other pastors. Only John was there, I mean, as a man of God. And but I mean, hallelujah. We understand that he was able to read and write and receive the dreams from the Lord. And he got many, many, many revelations from the Lord. I mean, he wrote the book of Revelation. That's the reason that we are using this book of Revelation and we are studying from the book of Revelation and we are getting more encouragement. We are getting more strength. Whenever we read and study about the book of Revelation, this is a blessing. Hallelujah. So if you ask Apostle John, he will say that. I mean, I mean, the, the, the time of isolation, the loneliness is a blessing for the people of God. Loneliness and isolation is a blessing for the people of God. Now we will go to I mean the next person, he is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. With that, we will close our message today. Hallelujah. And I have many things to share with you. Maybe the second word and third word. I mean, all are there. And we'll be, I mean, uh, speaking about that later. But now I would like to, I mean, uh, ask, I mean uh, close with uh, this message. I mean, this one, the first point. Okay. So we will study about Jesus Christ. Actually, Jesus Christ is the best example in the New Testament who went through the severe experience of loneliness. I'll tell you how. Jesus Christ is the person, the best example in the New Testament who went through the severe experiences of loneliness. Hallelujah. We see Jesus left his glory in heaven and alone came to this earth. Remember, his birth itself was unique. His birth itself was unique. You know, he came alone. He left his glory in heaven. He was God and he left the glory in heaven and he came down to this earth alone. There was nobody with him while he was taking the form of a human being. That's the reason I can tell you his birth itself was unique. You know, Jesus is the only one person who was born by the Holy Spirit. Right? Jesus is the only one person. That's the uniqueness of the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only one person who was born by the Holy Spirit. I mean, all others are looking at Jesus 
and they are saying, hey, Jesus, I mean, how you are born? You are born by the Holy Spirit. That is, what is the meaning of that? Amen. So we are, I mean, I mean, getting the birth in this world, I mean, but by the, I mean, physical, I mean, life of our people. But at the same time, you are born by the Holy Spirit. You are unique. You are a separated person. I mean, you are not like us. And you, you, can, you, you get away from us. You get away from us. I mean, the people, especially the people of Jew, Jewish people, they were, I mean, trying to, I mean, isolate him. Hallelujah. So the people of Jewish, the, the Jewish people, they were trying to, I mean, I mean, uh, get away from him. I mean, they were, they were saying, you, you go away from us. I mean, you, you are a disturbance for us. I mean, you, you are, I mean, uh, not, uh, 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 not a boy. I mean, who is born, at the, uh, who, who is having a normal birth? You are born, I mean, by the Holy Spirit. You know, he was alone in his lifespan. He was alone in all his lifespan. He was alone in his birth. He was alone in the temple. You know that, you know, when he was going to the temple, he was speaking alone. Others were just listening. They were not knowing what is happening about the life of Jesus when he went to the temple and he was speaking to those people alone. There was nobody to support him. There was nobody to stand with him. Hallelujah. But he was speaking alone in the temple. I mean, he was alone during the time of public ministry. Even though there were many disciples with him, even though there were many, I mean, I mean, a, a multitude with him. I mean, there were many people with him, but at the same time, he was doing the ministry, public ministry alone. Alone doing the public ministry. Hallelujah. There was nobody to stand with him. I mean, there were many people, but when he was in trouble, when Jesus was in trouble, I mean, everyone left off. And they said, okay, Jesus, you can face all these things even yourself. Hallelujah. So even in the, during the time of the public ministry, Jesus was alone. Alone. He was isolated in the garden of Gethsemane. He was isolated in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was isolated during the time of his crucifixion even. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, during the time of his crucifixion, he was isolated. There was nobody to support him. I mean, everyone were, I mean, I mean, saying something against him. Hallelujah. And we see him sitting alone for 40 days in the desert without food, all while being tempted by Satan. How do you understand that? You know, Jesus was sitting alone for 40 days in the desert without food, without food, taking fasting. I mean, taking fasting. He was alone. There was nobody with him. Hallelujah. Remember, the 40 days of his fasting and, and isolation, I mean, strengthened him to overcome the temptations of Satan. Hallelujah. The time of isolation, the time that Jesus was sitting alone, I mean, speaking to the Father God, I mean, 40 days, that 40 days of fasting isolation strengthened Jesus Christ, I mean, to overcome the temptations of Satan. Hallelujah. Now, one thing, let me tell you one thing this morning. Hallelujah. Whenever you go through the loneliness, hallelujah. Whenever you feel that, okay, I am alone. There is nobody to help me. Hallelujah. There will be somebody and there will be your family. There will be your wife or your husband, your children. Hallelujah. That's sure. And sure, I mean, your church members are there, hallelujah. Your friends are there at the same time. Some of the particular time, some of the particular time, they cannot help you. They cannot support you. They are there in your house, but in some points, they are not ready to help you. They are not, I mean, able to help you. They cannot do something, but God's presence is with you, hallelujah. Let me think about Jesus Christ. The crowds followed him everywhere. Amen. The crowds were following, the multitudes were following Jesus Christ everywhere. Amen. And he often snuck away early in the morning or late night to spend time alone with his father. Hallelujah. Even at the time of his crucifixion. Even at the time of his crucifixion. Hallelujah. I mean, we, saw, we know that everyone left him. At the time of crucifixion, everyone left him. His parents left him. His friends left him. Hallelujah. His I mean, disciples left him. The crowd, the crowd and the multitude, I mean, even they were experiencing many miracles in the life of Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ did many miracles for those people. But they all left Jesus at the time of crucifixion. And even we see his father, God, 
left him. His father God left him. Hallelujah. This was the situation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, but we see Jesus transformed his experience of isolation and loneliness into the blessing for the humankind. Hallelujah. Praise God. I mean, Jesus, I mean, just, I mean, I mean, I mean, transformed his experiences of isolation and loneliness into the blessing for the humankind. Hallelujah. While he was born and while he was doing his public ministry, I mean, while he was, I mean, I mean, healing the sick people, while he was, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, delivering the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, devil, uh, I mean, the foster people, you know, I mean, possessed the people, and uh, when he was, I mean, I mean, uh, at the at the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was uh, in uh, going to the crucifixion, you know, when he was in temple, hallelujah, I mean, wherever he was, and he was isolated. You know, wherever he went, he was isolated. There was nobody to help him. There was nobody to, I mean, support him. Hallelujah. But we have to understand one thing that, that I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ was, I mean, but making all these things. I mean, spending his time with the Father God. Hallelujah. And Jesus transformed his experiences of isolation, the, the, the experience of loneliness and the bitter experiences into blessing for the human kind. Because of that only we are saved. Hallelujah. Because of the death of Jesus Christ, because of the I mean, struggles of Jesus Christ, that we are the saved people and we got the salvation, we got the eternal life. Hallelujah. Let us thank God for I mean, the, the isolation period, the, the loneliness of Jesus Christ, and that is the blessing for the people of God today. Hallelujah. Let us all lift our hands together and praise the name of the Lord wherever you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I mean, as we were I mean, listening from the word of God, that hallelujah. I mean, praise God. Hallelujah. God's presence is with you. Hallelujah. I mean, I would like to, I mean, I mean, I mean, conclude my message today and we'll be, I mean, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, I mean, going to the uh, uh, next uh, uh, portion maybe in the next week. Hallelujah. And you have to want, uh, just one thing, know that, and not only that we see in the in the New Testament, I mean, I mean, time, Father God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to this world to demonstrate the unconditional love towards the mankind and to live and to have fellowship with the people to get away from the isolation and loneliness. Hallelujah. So we have to understand one thing. Hallelujah. This morning I was able to speak about only one word that was the pelican of the builders. I mean, I told you the builders means, hallelujah, there is nobody to help them. I mean, there is nothing. I mean, no food. Nothing is there. But the pelican which is sitting, the pelican, the word of pelican which is sitting I mean, uh, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness, hallelujah. I mean, we understand that David was going through many times. David was going through through the I mean, situation of isolation. David was going through the situation of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what is that? I mean, loneliness, hallelujah. But even whenever he was going through that situation, hallelujah, he was knowing that the strength of God, I mean, God's presence is with him and the presence of God will help him, hallelujah. So this morning, shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God? I mean, Shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God? I mean, we have the presence of God with us. We have the presence of God with us. Hallelujah. I told you, David was the person who was lonely and restless like a, like a pelican bird. Hallelujah. He was going through the many difficult situations. Hallelujah. He was restless many times. Hallelujah. He was lonely many times. Hallelujah. He was in isolation many times. Hallelujah. But we have to understand that, I mean, God has a concern towards the people, those who are going through the isolation. God has a purpose. And God has a, I mean, God has a concern about the people, those who are going through the isolation time. Hallelujah. You know, God when visited man, visited Adam. I mean, God, I mean, God's concern for Adam was he made the Eve for him. Hallelujah. And God's provision for Adam. Hallelujah. That the family is the provision of God. The children, the generation are the, I mean, are the provision of God. Hallelujah. And we have been studying about the Joseph, Moses, Paul, John, and Jesus. All these people, whenever they were going through the isolation time, whenever they were alone, hallelujah, they were able to, I mean, fruitful, able to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Even Jesus, while he was, I mean, taking 40 days of fasting, 
in a desert. Hallelujah. And we understand that, I mean, Jesus Christ was overcoming the, the temptations of, I mean, Satan, and Jesus Christ was, I mean, fruitful for the humankind. Hallelujah. Just like Moses. And he was sitting there on the mountain for 40 days. Hallelujah. He was receiving the presence of God. He was receiving the laws for the people of Israel. He was receiving the Torah for the people of Israel. And he could see the bank of God. Hallelujah. And he was experiencing the presence of God while he was sitting on the mountain as, a, as an isolated person. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me encourage you, every one of you. Hallelujah. Whenever we, we go through the isolation period. Whenever you go through the tough situation, whenever we go through the difficult situation in your life, hallelujah, remember one thing, God's presence is with you, hallelujah. God will not, I mean, never leave you, never forsake you, hallelujah. God's presence is always with you, hallelujah. And let us all trust in the Lord. Let us all, I mean, come it down with the mighty hand of God, hallelujah. God says that, okay, I will help you. I mean, I mean, this is a short time, hallelujah. The period of isolation, the period of loneliness is a short period, but the blessing of God, the period of blessing, the time of blessing is going to be forever and ever with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternal life. Hallelujah. So let us all, I mean, come into us of the mighty hand of God. Let us change all the difficult situations into the blessing. Hallelujah. I mean, in this season, or even, even in this season, hallelujah, whenever you are facing that problem in your life, hallelujah, let me tell you one thing. I mean, we are able to, I mean, transform the curse, and we are able to transform, I mean, I mean the, the isolation, the loneliness into the blessing by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We also cannot do anything, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit, through trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Through the presence of God, we will make all these things into blessings for the people of God. Hallelujah. Let us expect great things from the Lord and let us attempt I mean, great things for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let us surrender our lives in the mighty hand of God. I mean, I, I will request, uh, I mean, uh, Sister Nancy uh, to lead us in prayer now. I mean, we'll be praying for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, dear uh, Jeffy also. Sister Nancy is going to pray now.